This is the biggest update macOS has seen in years. This year's versions of iOS, macOS, and iPadOS are a groundbreaking redesign with a ton of new content and features that we've been waiting for for years. So today, I'm gonna give you a hands-on first look at macOS Tahoe, and we can check out the new design, features, and workflow, as well as some things that Apple didn't show you. Now, the first thing that you have to know about macOS Tahoe is that this redesign is more than skin deep. From the new liquid glass UI to an invisible menu bar, folders that can be color coordinated and given icons, completely reworked spotlight search, and a bunch of changes in iMessage, there is so much to get into, so let's not waste any time. We'll get started right away with the new liquid glass design. Now on the Mac, this new design is a little bit more subtle than on the iPhone, but it's still really nice to see the way that light refracts through these new glass UI elements. When switching desktops, or interacting with control center toggles, or setting up widgets, it all looks really, really nice. But while I love the way that album art bends through the player window in music, I will say, some of the new window arrangements leave a bit to be desired. While I love watching app icons disappear behind the buttons, when you open a blank window, I think that the control icons look a little out of place with these huge drop shadows. And not having the top of windows marked with a bar will definitely take some getting used to. It's worth noting that once you scroll down on a page, there is a sort of gradient to indicate where the top of the window bar is. And if you click at that top part of the window, it won't actually interact with the content until several pixels down. Liquid Glass UI also brings a lot more customization features to the Mac. In addition to changing the accent color, which has been a staple of Mac OS, you can now actually tint the icons in much the same way that you could on iOS. And I have to say, I think app tinting looks 10 times better on Liquid Glass UI than it did on the old version. I was never really a fan of that on iOS 18, but this looks really nice. And speaking of customization, there's now greater control over what can be added to the menu bar and control center. For example, adding a toggle that allows you to easily open the alarms section of the clock app. There's obviously a lot more features to dive into, but first, a quick word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by 8sleep. 8sleep is a revolutionary temperature control system that keeps you comfortable. And thanks to its advanced autopilot intelligence, it constantly works in the background to improve your sleep. I've been using 8sleep for over a year now, and for the last two months I've been sleeping on pod 4 every single night, and I absolutely love it. And 8sleep just announced the all new pod 5, which I'll be upgrading to later this month. It brings a bunch of new advancements that make it the first fully immersive sleep system. The all new Pod 5 blanket adds temperature control that mirrors the pod cover on each side of the bed, and an enhanced ultra base offers new sleeping positions to reduce snoring. And the pod now has a built-in speaker with soundscapes, white noise, and meditation. Eight Sleep are on the forefront of sleep technology, and I can definitely say that I've noticed an increase in my sleep quality since using them. I love getting sleep analytics without having to wear a biometric device, and it's super duper comfy. So to learn more about 8sleep, check out the link in the description below. A big thanks to them for sponsoring not just the channel, but also my sleep. And now let's get back to the video. Now my big takeaway from this year's WWDC and the new software releases is that Apple is working harder than ever to integrate all of their platforms. In fact, the Apple website now has a new tab, apple.com slash OS, which lists all of the different platforms in an easy to use format. So more and more, it seems like we're moving away from having dedicated features and software for each specific device category and more towards just having an overarching consistent experience, which I really like. And that means that most of the features that Apple demonstrated first with iOS are available on macOS as well. For example, the revamped Messages app is a fantastic update. I had the chance to mess around a little bit with the poll function, which I think is going to be extremely useful for group chats and making decisions as a group. And while other group chats have been able to do this for over a decade now, I do really like that you can change the backgrounds in iMessage. And I have to say, Apple provided some great presets. There's a bunch of different sky options that I think look really good. And if you go for the color mix, it allows you to customize, change the saturation, hue. It is really, really in-depth, and I really like it. 
but Apple is definitely gonna have to work on the stability of all of these features because I noticed that there was multiple times where it just broke the application. It would freeze, it would quit out of nowhere. A lot of work still needs to be done here. Now let's keep the customization train rolling because one of the new features that I really enjoy is Apple's reworked folder structure. There's a new option for customizing folders where you can individually change the color and there's a crap ton of icons that you can pick from. There's emojis as well if you want additional options but I could really see this being extremely useful to a lot of people. And I also noticed that there's a fun new animation when you drop something into a folder. I like this. But while most of the features Apple talked about in WWDC this year applied across the board, one that I was specifically excited about for macOS is the updated Spotlight Search. And this is a very sorely needed update because I would argue that Spotlight has been almost unusable for the past couple of years. For example, I type in the word iOS bugs, I get a whole bunch of folders, but do you know what I don't get? The photo on the desktop labeled iosbugs.png. Why does that not show up in Spotlight Search? Well, fortunately, the new redesigned Spotlight Search fixes all of these problems. It's now broken down into categories, applications, files, actions, and clipboard. And I'm really a big fan of the clipboard function because it allows you to search through things that you've copied even once you've moved on and then pull them out easily to put in something like a notes app or a text message or something. I found that it doesn't really work for photos, however, because if you try to copy a photo from the internet, it's just gonna give you the URL to that photo instead of the actual photo itself. But if I copy a photo from the Photos app, for example, then it will paste into notes no problem. Now, one of the other features that I was most excited about was Quick Keys. This is a feature built into Spotlight Search that's designed to help you streamline things. And it's super easy to set this up. Just click on Actions and you'll get a drop-down list where you can easily click Add Quick Keys to type whatever you want. And then, if you wanted to start a timer, for example, all I'd have to do is hit Command Space, type ST, it'll pull up my command, I put the number of minutes in, and boom, that's it. It's very, very simple. And you can set up a whole bunch of use cases for this, like creating a new note where it lets you autofill the title and then it'll boom, create the note right for you. And one that I found particularly useful was recognize music. So if I just type Shazam, it's going to listen and tell me what song is playing. And that's something I do a lot. So it's nice to have such an easy shortcut to gain access to that. Now, as is usually the case with these first round developer betas, there are a couple of features that aren't available right away. For example, during the WWDC key note they showed that live activities on your iPhone will show up on the Mac as well. And if you then click on the live activity, it opens the app through your phone via this screen sharing software introduced last year. And what this means is that Spotlight now has the ability to open apps on your phone through screen sharing. And in fact, if you go into Spotlight and type an app that's only on your iPhone, it will show up, but it doesn't actually do anything. So clearly there are a lot more features to come in the full release that I will be demonstrating later this year. So of course, be sure to get subscribed so you don't miss that content later. So given that this is a pretty unpolished early developer beta and a lot of the functionality that we can come to expect isn't gonna be implemented yet, what do I actually think of macOS Tahoe? Well, I really, really like it. I think that Apple's new liquid glass design is fantastic. It really brings me back to the old days of skeuomorphism and aqua. I absolutely love that it's consistent across all devices and it just brings a bunch of quality of life improvements that were a long time coming. For example, if you adjust the volume or brightness, instead of having that box that shows up right in the middle of the screen, now we get a much more minimal window that opens up near the control center, which makes a lot more sense. However, unfortunately, there are some legacy features of macOS that are starting to go away. For example, the app expose that's been around since, I think it was like Lion or Mountain Lion, way back in the day, that is now gone. If you do the four finger pinch or click the app icon in the dock, it's gonna just bring up the applications window of Spotlight Search. That has seemingly replaced App Expose. And personally, I don't really like that. I kind of miss App Expose. I'm not saying that everybody has to use it or that everybody does, 
In fact, a lot of people don't even know it exists, but I've been using it for 14 years and I would like to continue to use it, but now I can't. But my take overall on WWDC this year and macOS Tahoe is, wow, I'm impressed. After the past couple of years of, in my opinion, very underwhelming software updates, Apple is hopefully going to be proving with this update that they are serious. The iPad, the iPhone, the Mac, and even Vision Pro all got significant software updates this year, and I think that they're heading in the right direction. But that being said, I do have a few reservations for these features once they start launching later in the year, and that is mainly stability. One of my most recent videos was talking about how Apple software has felt really, really buggy lately. And I mean, even just from what you've seen in this video, these developer betas are incredibly buggy and laggy and glitchy. And that's not exactly a problem. You know, I I expect that a developer beta is going to be rough around the edges. But once we actually get to launch, I think this is really make or break for Apple. They need to prove that they can have a major update like this with a ton of new features and a new UI and a new design language and actually execute on it. Frankly, I don't think people are gonna be all that understanding if this great new redesign launches and it's really buggy and unusable for the first couple of months. So that's gonna be the big test for Apple. Can they do it? I'm not sure, but we're gonna find out. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to leave a like and a comment down below and a subscribe wouldn't hurt while you're at it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.